Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. It's called Church at the Joe, a church service located inside a bar. This woman decided to bring her nine-year-old daughter to the unconventional church. I was very impressed with the pastor, the way he spoke, um, the environment, the people. I just think it was fun. Pastor Cagle hopes to eventually hold services in the bar every Monday night. You get all the way back into the Old Testament and the Muslim and you, we actually serve the same God, Allah, to a Muslim, to us have a father, God. The lead pastor of a church. Hillsong NYC. If you've ran from church your whole life because yeah. you didn't like the organization, well, we meet in a club and we're not going to sing the songs you're used to singing and we're not going to preach a message you think you're going to hear. When we obey God, we're not doing it for God. I mean, that's one way to look at it. We're doing it for ourselves because God takes pleasure when we're happy. That's the thing that gets him the greatest joy this morning. So I want you to know this morning, just do good for your own self. Do good because God wants you to be happy. When you come to church, when you worship Him, you're not doing it for God, really. You're doing it for yourself. Because that's what makes God happy. Amen. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. They that forsake the law praise the wicked, but such as keep the law content. Let me tell you something, there is a full out war going on on this subject right now. Since today, uh, and where I feel offended and where I feel like people are wronging the Bible, and I, where I feel like the problem is, is not with the world. I, I don't expect the world to stand with God. I don't expect all this new evangelical fake you know, uh, Christianity of today, these big fun center churches to stand with God. Do you know who I'm expecting to stand with God? The Bible-believing, indefe independent, fundamental, so-called Baptist preachers. And they are the ones that are siding up with the world against men like Pastor Roger Jimenez. And they're siding up with the world. And they are criticizing the man of God. And the reason why is because there are Christians all over this city, all over this state, and all over this nation, yet yet the world. They have the same exact Bible that we read. And they're reading Leviticus 20:13. They're reading Romans 1. They're reading Judas and 1st and 2nd Peter. They're reading the entire Bible in context. And they're wondering why their pastor behind the pulpit is saying nothing about it. And he's supposedly supposed to be preaching these relevant sermons that are just, you know, for us today, the relevant sermons. What can be more relevant than this fight that is going on right now? And it's not a fight against Pastor Jimenez. No. It's not a fight against Pastor Anderson or Pastor Romero or Pastor Burgess or any other godly pastor. The fight is against the Word of God. Now look down at, first, at 2 Timothy 1, verse number 8. This is Paul writing to Timothy. It says, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me as prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. The Bible, he's saying right there, don't be ashamed of the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. What is the testimony? This is the testimony. This is the testament that God has given us about what God was. And you know what it is? Is people just don't understand the God of the Bible. And like Pastor Eden has said, it's like we can't just look at these verses in the Bible that talk about these sodomites and these perverts and just pretend like they're not there. Here's a question I have for, you know, the Rock of Roseville. When have you ever been afflicted for the gospel? When have you ever suffered persecution for standing, taking a stand? Here's why, because you don't take any stands. And look, let me say something. We've tried it their way. We tried the Rick Warren. We tried the Bill Hybel. We tried the Andy Stanley. We tried the never say anything offensive. Just act like the world. Be like them to try to reach them. We tried that for about 30 years now. For about 40 years now. You know what it got us? It got us legalized abortion. You know what it got us? It got us legalized sodomites getting married. You know what it got us? It got us this transgender movement. It's got us nowhere in America. And we need to get back to just preaching the Bible, living holy, living separated, saying, thus saith the Lord God, and actually being different. 
That's what it takes in America. We need to get back to biblical Christianity. But today, you know, we tried it. It didn't work. Give it up. I know you got rich, but it did nothing for America. So what do we need today? We need men to man up in the pulpit. Look, if you can't come into church when there's protesters out there, you know, how do you think you're going to make it during the tribulation? I mean, if you can't get, come to church because somebody's going to yell at you, how are you going to serve God when they're trying to kill you? I mean, how are you going to serve God when, when you know, I mean, good night. I, I think there's some Christians going to take their own lives, I guess, because they, if you can't stand up to that, you're not going to stand up to the mark of the beast. You can't stand up to that, you're not going to stand up to the Antichrist. I mean, we need a Christianity that is disciplined enough to say, I'm not going to be distracted. I'm not going to be intimidated. I'm not going to focus my attention on anything but the voice of God. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world.